Hi, here is Łukasz Dywicki and uh, welcome you on my talk Apache PLC for X for Canvas and CanOpen. This is part of IoT and uh, IIoT track in ApacheCon Asia. So today agenda is uh, composed from several big items. So uh, the first introduction part is about our interest in uh, IIoT, uh, our meaning the IT indeed. And uh, then I will introduce myself uh, and uh, CAN and CANVAS systems. And then we will do an overview of uh, um, Apache PLC for X APIs, uh, followed by uh, generic proposed driver, which is, I believe, one of most recent uh, additions to the project, uh, together with uh, can open and uh, can open usage together with uh, Apache PLC uh, for X. So a short note, uh, this talk is uh, intended mainly for IT audience. So if you work closely with can and can open, you probably know already more than I and more than I will be able to present here. But uh, if it would be very kind if you could leave a comment, if you watch the movie afterwards, uh, with your feedback about presentation and uh, its contents. And uh, if you find something misleading, uh, which requires uh, clarification, then please send me a message uh, to, using the email address, which is on this slide. So why we are interested in IoT? So first and foremost, the, this market will grow and different estimates say that it will grow roughly um, double every 10 years. Uh, at least the next 10 year will be like that. And this means that there will be a lot more devices coming to the market. And uh, besides that, uh, we still have industrial devices which were developed prior industrial Internet of Things uh, have been invented, let's say. So uh, some systems and the move of them is still very expensive, so they do require a brownfield kind of approach and uh, also we have uh, uh, standardization requirements and legislation which uh, we need to follow in IT in some areas and well uh, definitely IoT as a younger market will grow faster than big data and places where Apache PLC 4X can help are following so because market size will increase new devices will be uh, deployed, we need a uh, unified API which allows to talk, allows us, uh, uh, programmers, to talk with different equipment, with different hardware, with uh, single and quite, sta uh, quite, quite stable APIs. And I believe the Apache PLC 4X uh, does ship that and uh, we will talk briefly about that. The next point is really an expensive part of uh, industrial Internet of Things. I mean, it must be safe and uh, the old devices aren't that safe, especially that they lived in the silo kind of organizations and separated networks. And this industrial Internet of Things actually changes that. So uh, industrial machinery is no more uh, alone. It is running quite often close to the uh, office networks and so on. So uh, making a sure uh, a, a secure connection between those these systems, especially old ones, is not possible. And uh, so we need to take care of the older equipments and integrate with them as well, because no one will change uh, one million uh, dollars uh, expensive machinery just to add one or two connection possibilities and the standardization requirements will follow probably uh, because each jurisdiction will have its own approach towards the uh, law and uh, systems uh, law systems which regulate the IT field and the OT so uh, the growth of the IoT will also be able to steam a little bit the big data. I mean, you can always source the industrial data and feed the big data systems, making those uh, even richer. And how how Apache PLC Forex can help? Uh, so especially because this is a unified programming interface for various hardware and protocol, this uh, itself is a big advantage over the different approaches. So uh, it allows you to use different protocols using singular API, which uh, is 
uh, quite straight and uh, does not have any coronary cases. So the next point is uh, the SPI. If the existing APIs or uh, provided mechanisms do not work, you can always use the SPIs, uh, to, meaning the software provider interface, to make your own adjustments. The third point is really about library part of the Apache PLC 4X because it does ship a set of the drivers. These drivers are uh, tested and used uh, by several entities and those cover Modbus, S7, Siemens S7, back of ADS, a Ethernet IP as well as uh, can open. We also have the OPC UA support uh, which is receiving right now a very big updates. So by using Apache PLC 4X, you can access these protocols and this machinery uh, fairly easy. Uh, the fourth point is a toolkit nature of the Apache PLC 4X, which allows you to build your own driver. I mean, if there is something which is not supported by the project, it's not a problem to add a new driver. And uh, the fifth point, which is still forming, uh, is a framework. Uh, Apache PLC 4X and uh, some parts of the APIs can be used to build a, a rich applications which uh, not only access industrial equipment but can discover it, can uh, configure it themselves and build a lot of uh, additional, additional functionality on top of the mechanism shipped by it. So who I am? I am a guy who visited China several times um, but First and foremost, I'm Polish. I was work or I'm working in IT since 2005, since I was 19 year old, and uh, most of my professional career is related to open source. Since 2010, I am committer in Apache Caraf project, and since a few years, I'm also committer in Apache PLC 4X. So I'm also an independent software contractor. So I work uh, in my own company, and I also founded a product company called. Uh, Connectorio, where I did author uh, several open hub add-ons uh, and some of those rely on Apache PLC 4X and for example this is a screen of uh, open hub running uh, Apache PLC 4X can open integration and some uh, configuration interfaces which are available uh, in via open hub itself. So I got into the project uh, really uh, somewhere around 2018 uh, thanks to Christopher Dutz who uh, let me know that actually he uh, began working on some industrial thingy and uh, based on my prior experience with OpenHub uh, and BACnet he asked me to, to follow and uh, so later in 2020 I began experimenting with uh, link layer discovery protocol and uh, also Profinet DCP which uh, eventually led to implementation of uh, CanOpen. So, uh, let's talk a bit about CAN. So, the CAN bus is a specification which was initially published by Robert Posh. This is a company which uh, did look for a solution in the mid-80s to uh, introduce cheap, fairly cheap and uh, uh, affordable way to uh, connect uh, car peripheries. And uh, they did find out this way and publish the CAN specification in the late 80s and uh, later there was an update uh, and 2.0 release which was published first in 1991 uh, which became an ISO standard in 1993 uh, so the most recent release of CAN is CAN uh, FD uh, which was introduced in 2015 and uh, this is still CAN but uh, it changes a lot uh, in terms of how it works uh, and uh, one of the additional parts which uh, is currently in works and under the standardization is CANXL which uh, is first published and officially started in 2018. So few uh, key points about uh, CAN and its characteristics. So it's a multi-master digital bus system meaning uh, 
you can have multiple nodes trying to access bus in, uh, at the same time. Some of them might write, some of them might receive data. Uh, it doesn't really matter how it is constructed. The, your application, which utilizes the CAN, CAN bus itself and microcontrollers, trans receivers actually, can uh, um, detect collisions and uh, also uh, stop publishing the message if, if there is a high priority message already written to the or at the process of writing to the bus. So this uh, multi-master uh, nature has uh, certain advantages and the uh, lack of this explicit master-slave relationship which we know from Modbus and Profibus and other bus systems uh, is quite unique. And the thing which I did, did touch in the previous paragraph is really about the arbitration. So each message which is published to Canvas has an identifier and this identifier is used for prioritization of messages. So the lowest uh, identifier wins. If two nodes, two, two, two can nodes are trying to write to the bus, the one which writes the message with lowest priority will win and uh, the uh, second device, second node should stop from uh, continuation and wait for another cycle to write the, the message. And uh, because of uh, characteristics uh, can can also provide some time determinism which is uh, important in some applications and the major can usage nowadays is definitely in automotive industry this was the first sector which was uh, served by it and it is served till those days and uh, different standards uh, cover usage of can and canvas in cars trucks and special purpose vehicles and for example in the european market there is a standard called obd uh, if I believe this is onboard diagnostics, which uh, is mandatory for every new car which is uh, released in, in the euro. So another uh, sector which is uh, rich in the CAN and CANPAS solutions are robotics, input-output modules which uh, are used uh, in the industrial use cases mainly because of the uh, possibility to use uh, CAN in harsh conditions close to the magnetic field and also with motor controls and for the input output modules and motor controls we have an can, can open and uh, corresponding profiles which describe how these device should, devices should uh, behave uh, can is also used in buildings uh, for escalators for lifts actually most of escalators use somehow can uh, however it, it's quite hard to find a, a, a Countrywide standard in this area, so it's it can differ from country to country. And uh, besides that, can is also being used in a heating system and some smart home systems, mainly because of the simplicity of the uh, veering and uh, uh, ease of, of diagnostics. Uh, another part where can is uh, also dominant in use is. Uh, uh, energy and mobility and um, mainly in the battery management systems because these uh, areas use uh, extensively CAN. Um, some usage is also reserved for railways and the uh, aerospace however there are very little publications about that and uh, CAN is also used extensively in the CNC uh, in the mini milling machinery and, and so on mainly because uh, it's safety features which can be used for example the stop machine the spinners and, and so on are, are quite important and also the motor controls can be built with the uh, can so there are several versions of can already in the market uh, there is a can 20a uh, the, which is uh, published at the same time as uh, 20b and uh, this version of standard is from 90, 1991 so it's quite old and uh, it, the difference between CAN 20A and CAN 20B is the length of the identifier. So this arbitration, this is somehow sometimes referred as an arbitration field, but this is also uh, noted as, as an identifier. So both CAN 20A and B have uh, from 0 to 8 bytes of data, and uh, the difference in identifiers gives a more fine-grained uh, way to 
uh, do arbitration. Uh, both uh, T0A and T0B can go up to one megabit, and the uh, more recent releases like CanFD and CanXL can uh, do much faster. And the CanFD uh, expands to flexible data rate, and uh, this is uh, this most recent release of Can specification, which allows to use the burst transmission during the data uh, transmission phase so we can pass within the same time more data and so the uh, length of the data block in the kind of the frame is bigger and for can excel it's even higher and uh, it uh, goes up to 2048 bytes and uh, the the main idea behind the can excel is to let it be used as a uh, transport mechanism for wrapped IP packets. So uh, this means that it will be possible to uh, reuse CAN infrastructure for uh, IP networking. And uh, the speed of the network of CAN XL network is up to 10 megabit and even faster. It's not yet measured how fast the, it can go. So uh, most of these uh, standards are somehow compatible. For example, CAN FD and CAN XL can be used in the same network. Uh, similar with CAN 20A and, and CAN 20B. Uh, I mean, most of the microcontrollers which does support 20B can also support 20A. So it's it's more or less configuration and not the the hardware feature. And uh, if we look on the OSI layers, uh, then we. From IT perspective, we have uh, several things which we know very well, like DNS and HTTP, but those are the highest level of the uh, OSI layers. So th these are the so-called application protocols. And uh, rarely, but still we, in IT, we refer to TCP, UDP, and sometimes IP. But very, very rarely, we really talk about Mac and Ethernet and uh, uh, the cable related part which uh, is uh, actually a physical network and uh, because uh, all operating systems do standardize the network stack so handling of the MAC addresses, Ethernet frames, IP uh, frames and TCP UDP transports is implemented within the system we do not bother much about those and how those are being made so our applications are, are built for concrete operating systems and they work with the tools which are provided by operating systems, meaning that we build our applications and our protocols with assumption that the network will work. Uh, and uh, this is quite different for CAN, uh, because depending on the operating system, we might have standardized uh, network stack, let's say, or not. For example, on Linux, we have a socket CAN, and socket CAN is kind of network stack uh, I mean I, I don't want to uh, over overestimate it but the socket can it does unify various kinds of the hardware which can be used to access uh, um, canvas and uh, so uh, different uh, suppliers of can modules can write uh, drivers which do contribute to socket can instead of uh, writing their own drivers. Uh, on the other hand, for Windows, uh, we have a different situation, so uh, usually hardware adapters ship their own uh, interface, which is based on the serial API or, or um, some other mechanism which are not standardized. So the, this is a big difference because uh, it does impact how we write the integrations, which do, do rely on CAN, and uh, in most of the cases we cannot run out of specifics of the hardware which is being used. And uh, if we will have a look on Apache PLC4X and how Apache PLC4X does map the OSI layers, we will find that uh, the top layers uh, go to... Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. The top layers uh, are handled by driver and protocol, while the low levels uh, from transport down to the physical are wrapped in the transport. So, because the Apache PLC 4X works with the uh, operating systems, I mean, it's not embedded, it can be embedded in the microcontrollers, but uh, uh, its APIs are not intended to implement system specific parts. 
those are rather uh, the APIs of the Apache PLC 4X are intended to unify the most common uh, situations related to the integration. And this means that, for example, delivering the data stream and then turning the data stream into concrete uh, information, uh, which is uh, according to the protocol. And now, uh, a very quick look on the Apache PLC 4X API. So there are several parts uh, which which we can outline. So the, there is an SPI which allows to wire in new new transports. There is a toolkit part which I did mention before. Uh, this is an M spec uh, message specification which can be used to generate the code and then be uh, used in the driver and protocol implementation. So these are there. Uh, the, the, the driving protocol does define the field and the field is really an uh, information uh, how to access the data uh, in, in a given protocol and the field is specific to the driver and our application needs to use a valid syntax for uh, for a field so even if there is no direct linking between the user application and the driver the field syntax is different between the drivers so our application, if uh, it wants to interact with the hardware, uh, it can use several APIs which are available in the Apache PLC 4X. This is the read-write, subscribe, metadata, browse and discovery. And those are uh, covering different aspects and not all drivers support all of those operations. So this is the set of public APIs and uh, drivers, uh, depending on the possibilities, they can ship or cannot ship those. And uh, the, the route, uh, start, the st we start from in interacting with the driver manager, which allows us to obtain a connection to, to the hardware. And a few, few important points. The driver is an implementation of a specific protocol, and uh, it might utilize generated structures, but does not have to. So it means that uh, it's possible to implement a, a wrapper using the Apache PLC 4X APIs and use the third-party libraries. And that was the case for OPC UA driver in, uh, in our project for uh, past three releases. Uh, but uh, the root responsibility or the prime responsibility of the driver is to define wire-related operations, like what is the root frame of the uh, expected by the protocol and uh, how uh, which transport should be used and how this, uh, this transport is, is being uh, utilized. So the driver is uh, wrapping up not only the protocol but also have to touch a little bit of, of the transport and for most of the IP based uh, drivers it's uh, almost a transient operation. And the next key point is uh, a field. Uh, as I said it's, it's quite specific to uh, each and every protocol and you can think of it as a coordinate to access data available via a given protocol. So it's definitely a driver specific and for example uh, here you can see a generic CAN uh, field information. Uh, here is the CAN open definition which defines the uh, sub protocol uh, used in the CAN open, the node ID, uh, the uh, index, index and sub index and also the, the data encoding which is expected to be on the other side. And uh, the last example is actually uh, back of ADS uh, field syntax. So as you can see the differences can be significant and uh, your application must know uh, a bit of the uh, about the device in order to construct proper fields and, and request proper data. So fields are used in most of the interactions with Apache PLC 4X because this is the coordinate which tells the project, the, the library, which data the application wants. And it does imply in many, many cases the data type returned to you, but also uh, wire encoding. And this is an, an example of a code which uh, is used uh, to, to access... Uh, to this is an example uh, how to call the driver and re retrieve the data over can open. So here you can see that the, there is a connection string which uh, specifies the driver, the transport, the interface name and also some uh, driver or transport specific options. So the node ID in this case goes to can open driver. 
then we construct a read request add the field this the item the first argument here is the alias which we are using to later on to retrieve the result this is a field syntax which i did explain briefly before and then we build the request uh, call and execute and uh, await for response and the uh, response can be either success or an error and if there is an error then uh, we should get a uh, uh, stack trace and uh, in the end we can also uh, call the uh, result and uh, display it to, to the user so few few notes as you can see most of the API calls, at least in Java case, are using Java 8 completable feature. So it does promote asynchronous practices for read and write. And this means that your application uh, must be aware that some actions might not be intermediate. You have to block explicitly if you, if you require an intermediate action. So uh, for many, many places, we make an extensive use of the build pattern. So it allows you to construct uh, the request and process them in uh, in very convenient way and almost all interactions with uh, PIC4X will rely on fields and now uh, let's have a look on uh, generic can driver and how this syntax the driver the transport and the fields can be used to uh, access can frame as we know the can frame can have from 0 to 8 bytes of data and uh, in this particular case, we know that uh, it's possible to write to the bus, but because canvas does not have any explicit syntax about the reading data, like request response, the read operation is not supported. So we can write and subscribe for messages uh, coming from the other end. So this is uh, a quite different from many, many uh, other uh, drivers where you can read and write data. Uh, but here in this case, this is a generic proposed driver which does not know how to implement the read requests. Uh, and uh, in fact, there are things called uh, remote frames for CAN, but those are not recommended for a new deployment. So we are not using it uh, in any explicit way. So uh, generic CAN driver have to know how to construct the frame. And uh, so the fields which we are using for write and subscribe calls they do the final frame structure so in, the application needs to know uh, what it expects to receive or what it wants to, to, to write and construct it using the field syntax and the field syntax is uh, based on the node id type and the eventual id array size so by using the proper order of the calls we can construct uh, a concrete frame so this is a uh, a generic uh, code or code which uses a generic can driver and writes to the bus. As you can see, there is uh, three fields uh, uh, and one node, 200, which uh, is uh, used. And uh, the frame will compose will contain a static part, two, two static elements, and then one uh, counter which will be incremented and resetted from time to time uh, and the subscribe uh, call looks uh, looks very similar so we do uh, define uh, fields and as you can see the field naming is, is different because this is the other part or other side of the communication however the uh, order of the fields which are defined is the same and uh, they do also use the same node ID. And uh, the difference is that uh, in the end we get a subscription, so subscription handle and this subscription handle is called each time when there is a message on the bus. And uh, this subscription handle is quite simple. It does uh, take a subscription event and writes out all the fields which are part of the, of the event. So now, now we can have a look how this looks alike. I, I will start from uh, watching the pass. As you can see, uh, this is a, a standard Linux utility. And now I will. Uh, I am starting the subscription, and as you can see, it does not generate any traffic on the bus because subscription is is a is a client 
uh, a side thingy. And now uh, we will start writing the data and here you can see we, we get the in the output the counterpart of, of the frame. So apparently it works and uh, the, the, the driver um, the, the writing part does work and, the, and it does um, publish the messages and uh, now here we, we see it also receives the data so we have a field name, the, the value and here you can see that uh, it does increase the uh, the counter. So moving forward, uh, this syntax I is very simple and as you can see we wrote a semi-generic application which interacts with CAN with just, I don't know, 10, 20 lines of code. So so it's quite quite basic. And uh, if we will have a look on the canvas traffic, uh, we will see the interface name, the direction of the communication, so a transmit or a receive, and since I'm using the virtual interface uh, over the socket, socket can, uh, it doesn't really matter, but uh, if we would have two physical nodes uh, which are accessing Canvas, it would, uh, it would matter because uh, on the one side we would have TX and on the other the RX. Here we can see a hex of the uh, node ID, the size of the data, and you can notice that uh, the data is set to 8, but this is mainly because of zero pad uh, added by the socket can. So we have the 0 0.55, which is the static part of the frame, the another part of the static frame, and then the last part, which is uh, which is the counter. And so you see that uh, with generic approach, we can support some applications like read and write. And uh, the can open is fairly old uh, standard how to build the automation systems with uh, with can and uh, it was published in 1994 as uh, so-called CIA 301 or can in automation 301. This is the document which was initially again maintained by Bosch Robert Bosch GmbH and uh, was uh, released and uh, formed actually. Uh, one of the first vendor independent uh, uh, field passes because uh, back in then, back in there in, in the early 90s, there were very few systems which could offer functionality such can did. So uh, it gained some adoption, but uh, clearly there was no standards how to read, write, or broadcast data. So CanOpen did define these protocols. It also did define encoding of the data types and uh, Beside that, it also did introduce uh, the object dictionary. And the object dictionary is a list of the addresses which should be used for read, write, and broadcast uh, operations. And uh, the dictionary is integral part of the CanOpen spec, and each uh, device, CanOpen device, does have uh, the uh, object dictionary. So sometimes it is referred as OD, like in the shortcut. And uh, by the design, can open network can have uh, up to 127 nodes and uh, if we have a closer look on can open it does use the 11-bit identifier of can frame and first four bits are used as the can service identifier and the, this gives uh, the first four bits uh, a major uh, uh, take in the prioritization of the messages. The following seven bits from the identifier are used for node ID. So on the seven bits we can uh, encode up to, I believe, 127 uh, unsigned number. And uh, these two things together serve uh, uh, a full can identifier. And uh, the services and their uh, priorities are following. The NMT, this is a network, management uh, and uh, it does define the uh, ways how the nodes can broadcast their state like if they are uh, ready to be activated or activated they uh, should uh, broadcast that and this is one, one uh, this is actually one or two uh, broadcast or, or request reply protocol then we have a sync which uh, does emit a, a synchronization uh, frame which other devices should use to, to adjust emergency time broadcast process data object pdo sdo and herbert so uh, from those uh, the ones which uh, are most common or happen most often is uh, 
uh, or are most useful, sorry, are PDOs and SDOs. And uh, the, there are several data types which are supported by CanOpen. And uh, obviously there is a Boolean which takes one bit. There we have a numbers of different sizes from eight bits to 64. And we have also floats and the byte uh, array which is uh, called a record. And the, the uh, encoding of the record depends on the device. So the, the record itself is, is a, a sequence of the data which needs to be uh, interpreted according to the object dictionary. There are also time-related types which are currently not implemented in Apache PLC 4X and also text-related uh, types. And uh, using the can open object dictionary plus specific addresses, the can in automation does define uh, profiles. And these profiles uh, define again additional pools of the addresses and these addresses uh, can be used in uh, specific devices or applications to, to build a solution. So uh, quite often CanOpen profiles they do define also a behavior of the CanOpen nodes and uh, these profiles are actually a base for device certification in certain directions. And uh, CanOpen in Apache plc 4 x is implemented Partially, so we do not su support all of the services, and uh, our implementation is uh, more focused on the data acquisition and uh, some basic interactions with the CAN devices. But it does not implement a full CAN open device as it is defined in the specification. So we do have a support for process data objects, so PDO uh, can be either receive or transmit, those are broadcast messages. We also have SDOs which uh, are read-write operations. So as you can see, while we do not have uh, read-write operations for generic CAN, we do have uh, read-write operations on top of the CAN bus using a CAN open. And besides that we also have a support for Herbert and no node monitoring. And the field syntax for, for can open is a service name, node ID, and then protocol specific part. So depending on the uh, specific service, we might have a different, uh, different parts. For example, for SDO, we have index and sub-index. So those are object uh, dictionary uh, defined uh, verticals. And then for the transmit and receive PDO, we have four groups, which serve as a prioritization. And then the node ID, and the type of the data expected and for node, node, node monitoring we have either the monitoring for all of the nodes or specific node. So in real life we, if we would like to start with can open we need to get first a compatible interface with the can uh, so on Linux obviously this is a socket can and it's easiest to be easiest to get and to start with because there is a wide selection of the compatible hardware and then uh, that there are several other uh, aspects so we need to know how to read and write data and for receiving only we can use easily PDOs because this is a process data and the process data is most interesting in most of the cases because this is how we do the um, uh, analysis and, and, and things like that and the SDOs on the other hand are used to read write uh, data and configuration so it is still used and some systems might use it also to transmit process data but it's far less effective because the PDO is uh, uh, does occupy a single message on the CAN bus while SDO the smallest SDO transaction on the bus will occupy uh, at least two messages and if we would like to pass eight bytes of the data which fits normally into PDO we need to use four frames on the count with the SDO. So as you can see, there is a severe impact on the CAN bus. And now, uh, a few words how the CAN open, general CAN, and CAN transport can work together. And the, this is really uh, a unique uh, possibility which uh, was uh, updated because first time when I did work on can open driver implementation I did uh, merge it actually with the socket, socket can frame uh, shape and recently I managed to uh, separate those and so now we can have a generic drivers generic transport oh, so, so we can have can base transport can 
uh, tra can application layer implementation uh, like CanOpen uh, or OBD and they do not stick with specific hardware and the specific microcontroller to, to, to interact with. So it usually starts from the wire and uh, fr from the trans receiver and the CAN transport which can talk to this uh, specific hardware and access the bus. Then in case of socket CAN, it is being transformed into the socket CAN frame and it is being passed through the con conversation wrapper. And this conversation wrapper is part of the SPI for Apache PLC4X, which is used by each and every driver to receive or send data. So this wrapper does the transformation and uh, it does use the frame handler, which uh, is uh, uh, defined by the driver to map CAN frame to protocol frame. So the main difference is that the, each CAN uh, transport can have a different representation of the CAN frame, which is specific to the microcontroller which is used for that. And uh, each protocol, on the other hand, can still use its own root frame and there are no common parts. So this transformation layer allows to use any CAN transport with any CAN driver. And uh, obviously there is an impact on the performance, but uh, for data acquisition uh, scenarios, it's not that relevant, I would say. And moreover, it allows us to implement faster drivers and uh, do it uh, in reliable way, because the, each driver, like can open can have its own syntax related to, to the processing of the data and does not have to worry much about the CAN frame itself. So if you, if you find it interesting, then please uh, uh, leave your questions and I will try to answer those. And remember, if you can, then you can always visit Apache PLC 4X website. You can also find me uh, in the social media and uh, well, I wish <laughs> we can meet on uh, Apache PLC4X uh, mailing lists and cooperate more. Thank you for your attention.